insulin resistance is a phenomenon with two facets uh, that you cannot pull apart. The expected um, reduced signaling where the hormone insulin isn't quite working the way it used to throughout the entire body. Now, that is not a universal effect. It's not that every cell of the body isn't responding to insulin anymore, but it uh, some cells aren't responding as well. So I'm just kind of couching that in a vague insulin isn't working as well as it used to. So that's the insulin resistance part. And that's a cell specific phenomenon. But of course, these cells are within the entire body, the entire organism. And within the entire body, we have another aspect to this, which is hyperinsulinemia. So the elevated insulin. That is what is so important. There is no such thing as insulin resistance without there being an accompanying, and I would say often preceding, hyperinsulinemia. But if you're following an individual over their life, <clears throat> our metabolic view is very glucose-centric. And I don't even mean to imply that it's wrong. Uh, I, For example, I'm an enormous advocate, and I know this is an advocacy you and I share with regards to the clinical utility of CGMs. <clears throat> and being able to constantly monitor glucose is a powerful tool because it's the dynamic nature of glucose that helps you get a better insight in, uh, into your metabolic health rather than just a fasting glucose test. The average individual who's coming to their physician year in and year out they will be gaining weight. They will have high blood pressure. Now they're on an antihypertensive medication. They may have some form of infertility in male or female. And the physician is only ever looking at the glucose levels. And because the glucose levels are staying in a decent range, they assume, well, there's no metabolic problem here. But mm -hmm. if we truly want to understand me metabolic problems, we have to look at the hormone insulin because the glucose levels are themselves simply a symptom or a manifestation of disordered insulin action. And so and here's it's the not part of a standard comprehensive metabolic panel. So this that's, is a that's discussion right. we are having in our medical education. And even the students yeah. are kind of like very confused by that. So we have yeah. conventionally trained clinicians who just are really taught to look at glucose. But if they were to include an insulin measurement, they would have found that over the years, Insulin has been getting higher and higher and higher, and this is reflective of insulin resistance, but it's enough insulin to keep the glucose in check. It's, it's when there are now an additional handful of events, um, which includes the insulin resistance pr um, progresses to tissues like the alpha cells of the pancreas that release glucagon. And it progresses to the liver. The liver becomes insulin resistant. And now we have dysregulated glycogenesis versus glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Yep. And then even the muscle, which is, of course, the main consumer, about 80% of the, of the postprandial glucose clearance when someone eats a starchy, sugary meal, it goes into the muscle. But then as the muscle becomes insulin resistant, it, its ability to pull in glucose is reduced by about 50%. So it goes down by half.